Inner Sanctum Mysteries, starring Peter Lorre, brought to you by Carter's Little Liver Pills. Before we open the squeaking door on Inner Sanctum this evening, here's a message the government would like to have passed on to you. Women are urgently needed now in war plants and essential industries. There are all kinds of war jobs which don't involve machinery or tools, such as driving a bus or taxi, working in a laundry, restaurant, school or day nursery. And in filling these jobs, women are relieving men for heavier work. Ladies, if you live in an area where there's a shortage of war workers, go to the office of the United States Employment Service nearest your home at once. The address is in your local telephone book. But remember, do not move to a crowded war center in search of a job. It will only add to the housing and living problem already existing there. Your first and only necessary step to volunteer your services in a war job is to visit your local United States Employment Service office. Get yourself a war job and hasten the day of victory. And now we open the squeaking door. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. This is Raymond, your host. I'm glad you came tonight, because we have a very special guest of horror with us. I'd like you to meet the late Johnny Gravestone, the most celebrated member of the Inner Sanctum Ghost Society. He is the best haunter of them all. Johnny is the tall figure in a white sheet wearing the blue ribbon. He's haunted everything, from a palace to a telephone booth. And uh, if you're very nice to him, he'll be glad to consider giving your house to once over. Who knows? He may even haunt you. <laughs> Tonight's Inner Sanctum story, The Black Seagull, is an original radio drama by Sigmund Miller and stars Peter Laurie in the role of Richard Blake. It's produced under the direction of Hyman Brown. Inner Sanctum Mysteries are brought to you by Carter's Little Liver Pills. When you feel dull, headachy, sluggish, take Carter's two-way treatment to, first, start your liver bile flowing quickly. Second, get comfortable relief from irregularity. Well, we're about to begin our story. Oh, uh, I forgot to warn you about the uh, Tremblins. They're those pesky, invisible cousins of the Gremlins. They uh, sidle up to you, give you quick little shoves, and create the false impression that, that you're trembling. If you're being troubled by a Tremblin, just grab him by his invisible little horns and stick him into the nearest pincushion. Dusk is settling fast along the Carolina coast. A few miles out at sea, a motorboat rides through the choppy waters. Dr. Griffin and Richard Blake are frantically scanning the horizon, looking for Richard's wife, Barbara, who's lost in sail. It's getting dark, Richard. We've got to find her before nightfall. Perhaps she's gotten back home by now. We've been gone for over an hour. The mast was loose in the sailboat. It would never hold out in that wind. Barbara is in a disabled boat. We haven't much gasoline left. I'm not going back until we find her. The only thing we can do is call the Coast Guard. Did you hear that, Dr. Griffin? Yes. Seagulls. Sounded like a human cry. Oh, no. It's only the gulls, Richard. Listen. It's the same sound. No. This is no bird cry. That was Barbara. That was the cry of a seagull. See? He's right above us. A black seagull. A black gull. Completely black. It's an ominous sign. Something has happened to Barbara. Oh, come now. I hope you don't believe in that superstitious nonsense. Look. Over there. Do you see it? It looks like a boat. It's Barbara. The mast. The mast is down. We'd better get over there fast. Here, help me put her on the couch. Dr. Griffin, please, you, you've got to do something. I'll do everything I can. 
Mm. The Pretty mast. bad. Concussion. The mast. It must have come loose and struck her. Please, please, Dr. Griffin, you've got to bring her back. She may come to any second. Or she may never come out of it. No, no, no. It isn't true. I wish it weren't. Her skull is crushed. The injury is a fatal one. No, no. It's only a surface wound. Perhaps an operation. We can get her to a hospital. Look. Look, she's coming too. Please, Richard. There isn't a chance. Richard. Yes, darling. Oh. It, it wasn't my fault. The mess. It, it broke in the wind. Don't talk, my darling. I'm... I'm so sorry, Richard. Don't be unhappy. You're going to be all right. Dr. Griffin says you're going to recover. No. You've got to hold on, darling. We'll get you to a hospital. You... You've been so good to me, darling. We've been very happy together. You can't leave me, Barbara. I won't live without you. Oh, you... You mustn't say that. If you die, Barbara, I don't want to live. I'll always be near you. I'll come back. If it's possible. You must. You must come back. You must. If you don't, I'll come to you. No. No, I'll... Return, Richard. I'll return. Richard, I... Oh. He's gone. (laughs) (laughs) The men are ready to lower the coffin, Richard. You wish to pay your final respect? Final respect? This isn't the end. It's the beginning. Do you understand? The beginning. Barbara isn't gone. She'll come back. She said so. No, Richard. No one comes back from the grave. It's dangerous to believe that. Dangerous for your sanity. She'll come back. She didn't lie. All right, men. Lower the body. Did you hear that? Yes. Yes. The seagulls again. That wasn't the seagull. (laughs) I told you. That was Barbara's voice. Please, Richard. It's only a gull. No. It's her. She's calling to me. (laughs) She promised to return. You see? Barbara didn't fail me. You must stop this, Richard. You'll wind up in an asylum. You are a fool, Dr. Griffin. Lower the coffin, man. That was her voice. No, no, no. Don't lower it. That sound came from the coffin. She might even be alive. She's dead, Richard. I want that coffin opened. We can't do that, Richard. There's no way of opening it now. We'll pry it open. Don't try to stop me, Dr. Griffin. All right. We'll open it. Here, one of you men. Break the seals at the top of the coffin. For heaven's sakes, hurry, hurry, It will only be worse for you, Richard, if you look at poor Barbara again. Will you tell the man to hurry? The coffin's opened, Richard. Now you can see for yourself. Look. Look at her face. Her face? You wouldn't believe me. Look at her mouth. As if she had just called... Who is there? Dr. Griffin. Come in. The door is open. Oh! You took me by surprise, Richard. I didn't expect you to be sitting so close to the door. I'm sorry I startled you, Dr. Griffin. I just thought I'd drop in before I went to bed. Are, uh... Are you waiting for someone? 
Yes, I am. What are you sitting in the dark for? Where's the light switch? I don't want any light. I prefer sitting in the dark. Richard, you're becoming very morbid. Don't you think you ought to get to bed? It's nearly midnight. Midnight. Yes. That's the time she'll come back. You really believe Barbara will come back? Yes. I'm sure she will. Well, we'll see. She'll come. If she does, it'll only be in your mind. Please be quiet. Well? Barbara! You've come. She's here. I know she's here. Oh, darling. You've kept your promise. Richard, stop it. Where's the light switch? Put that light out! It was nothing. The wind opened the door. It was just a coincidence that happened at the stroke of midnight. I didn't close the door properly when I came in. She was here. I felt her cheek on mine. You imagined it. Imagined it. Look, Dr. Griffin. Look at my cheek. My cheek. A teardrop fell on my cheek. It's not a teardrop. It's the rain. The wind blew some rain in through the open door. It wasn't the rain. Barbara was here. If you hadn't put on the lights, I would have seen her. Barbara. Barbara, some people do come back from the grave. I... I heard about such places. Richard. Barbara. It's you. Yes, It's darling. you. It's me. I promise never to leave you. I... I was about to give up. I was beginning to lose hope. How good it is to see you again. Yes, darling. It's very good. I promise I'll be trying to come back. Then it was you who opened the door at midnight. Yes, Richard. And it was your tears that fell on my cheek. Wasn't the rain that Dr. Griffin said? Yes, Richard. Richard. But I couldn't see you then, I... I just felt your cheek in his time. It was very hard to return at all. What is that noise? I don't hear anything, Richard. That, that sound disturbs me. It makes me uneasy. You're asleep. Fast asleep. Perhaps the sound will fade away. Look at me, Richard. Well, I can see you much more clearly. And the sound? <laughs> Perhaps we'll never be separated again. So good to be with you again. Let me hold your hand. Wait. Why, why do you say that? Not yet time. What do you mean? You haven't crossed over yet. Can you still hear the banging? Oh, just a little. Oh, but I don't go away. I can't help it. Someone's dragging you away. Don't let him. I don't want to go back. I'll try to come back again, Richard. I don't want to go back. I want to stay with you. Goodbye, Richard. 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 Wake up. Mm. Wake up. Good thing I heard the shutters banging. I came in to see what was making all this noise. You... You shouldn't have wakened me. Hmm. This box of pills. You took an overdose of these sleeping tablets. If I hadn't awakened you, you would have slept on until eternity. Barbara came for me. She was just about to take my hand. Perhaps if she had, you'd never have gotten up. I didn't want to get up. I wanted to be with Barbara forever. <laughs> Well, 
<laughs> Dr. Griffin should be awarded the Order of the Inner Sanctum for saving the life of Richard Blake. If it weren't for the good man, our story would have come to an end in the middle of the program. And that would have been very inconvenient for all of us. As a reward, perhaps we'll just uh, wound Dr. Griffin a little bit instead of <laughs> polishing him off, hmm? But until we make up our minds, here's a gentleman with an important message for you. To keep you feeling on top of the world, medical knowledge proves that nature should produce about two pints of liver bile, the vital digestive juice your liver makes, each day. Otherwise, your food may not digest properly and leave you feeling dull, headachy, sluggish. Scientific facts show it takes a two-way treatment to get the vital digestive juice flowing quickly and to relieve sluggishness without disturbing digestion. Therefore, do as thousands now do. Take Carter's Little Liver Pills. First, because Carter's start the vital digestive juice flowing, usually within 30 minutes. Second, because Carter's gently help you to that glorious feeling that goes with regularity. Remember, many ordinary simple laxatives don't, but Carter's Little Liver Pills do give this two-way treatment. So take genuine Carter's Little Liver Pills as directed tonight. Tomorrow, see if you don't wake up feeling glad to be alive. Get Carter's at any drugstore. 25 cents. Now we're ready to continue with our strange story. I hope you've all made yourselves comfortable. If it's too warm for you, we'll be glad to chill you a bit. Or if it's too cold, we'll be glad to make it hot for you. As a matter of fact, from now on, you'll get it both hot and cold. The following evening. Barbara, you must come back to me. Barbara. Barbara. Can you hear me? Perhaps she can't get in. She said it was hard for her to come back. I'll open the door. Barbara! <laughs> For a moment, there was a shadowy figure to do. I did see something. She's here. Oh. It's you, Kitty. Barbara's pet. <laughs> Haven't seen you since Barbara died. Come here, Kitty. Who are you looking at? Barbara! Richard. Where are you? Right here. Your, your voice is so faint. Come closer. Come closer. Uh, I don't know where you are. The closet where I used to keep my clothes. Darling, I still can't see you. This blue taffeta dress. My favorite. I used to love the rustling sound it made when I walked. It's still crinkled. <laughs> like it always did. Richard. What are you? Please don't go away. Right here. My vanity table. For heaven's sake, Barbara. Let me see you again. My perfumes. They're all here. Nothing has been touched, darling. Here's my favorite. Wild Heather. I'll never wear it again. Barbara, please don't go. Where are you? I'm everywhere in this room. Everywhere. Why can't I see you? Perhaps you will. You must both try. You must both try very hard. I'll try, Barbara. Goodbye, my darling. No, not yet. Just another moment. Goodbye, Richard. Barbara. Barbara. She's gone. She's gone. Only you and I know she was here. Uh, who is there? Oh, it's you, Dr. Griffin. I came back to see how you were. 
I don't need any help. I heard you shouting Barbara's name. You were mistaken, Dr. Griffin. Barbara's dress. It's lying over the chair. Did you take it out of the closet? No, Dr. Griffin. The perfume's in the air. Oh, yes. There's a bottle of perfume overturned on the vanity table. Wild Heather. That was Barbara's favorite, wasn't it? Yes, Dr. Griffin. You think Barbara was here? Don't you, Richard? Hmm? She was here. I spoke to her. And she'll come again. She said she would. And maybe the next time I'll be able to see Barbara. See her as she was when she was alive. I know you don't want visitors, Richard, but you shouldn't be alone. I brought Miss Driscoll with me to look after you. How do you do, Mr. Blake? Barbara will be here soon. You haven't been eating. You've lost a lot of weight. Richard! Yes, Dr. Griffin? You've got to listen to me. <laughs> There's nothing you can tell me. You won't last at this rate. Look at you. Pale and lifeless. You're still alive, but you're living among the dead. Well, you've got to stop this. If you don't, you'll wind up in an asylum. <laughs> an asylum? You still don't believe Barbara had come back? No, Richard. She hasn't come back. You saw for yourself the other night. Her dress, her perfumes. She came back. I spoke to her. You took the dress out of the closet yourself. And it was you who overturned the bottle of perfume. You are lying, Dr. Griffin. It wasn't me. You're trying to come between us. I won't let you. I won't. Barbara! Richard. I've come back. Darling. I can see you. Get me my bag in the hall, Miss Driscoll. Hurry. I can see you very clearly now. Do I look any different? No. You're even lovelier than ever. Richard. We've got to meet each other halfway. Richard. Yes, darling. I've been trying. I tried very hard. I've brought some friends. They all want to meet you. Friends? Yes. This is Fred Rankin. You remember him. Oh, Fred. How do you do, Richard? I'm Fred Rankin. But you're... you're dead. Yes. I've been dead for six years. And this is Mr. Fielding. Remember him? He was your neighbor once. Killed by an automobile. Yes. I've been dead for a long time. Ever since you were a young boy, Richard. And this is Mary Schofield. The girl you went to school with. Barbara. Barbara, watch out. The mast. It's falling. It's falling. Richard, help me. Help me. Help me. It's Barbara. It's Barbara. She's out there in a boat. The mast is gone. I've got to save her. Before it's too late. You're not going anywhere. There's no one calling you. Nurse, help me get him back into bed. Let me go. Staying here with me. Come back. Come back, Richard. Well, he couldn't have swum very far in a short time, Dr. Griffin. I caught sight of him. Just a moment ago. Oh, oh, there he is. Yes, I see him. Yes, but he's going down. He's going down. Merciful heaven. Did you see? Yes. He's gone down. But he was holding someone. I... I could see her long black hair. It's no use. We'll never... You say he was holding someone? Yes. It looked like a woman. She had long black hair. It 
must have been seaweed. You see things in this twilight that don't exist. Imagination is like fire. A good servant, but a bad master. I guess we had better get back. Dr. Griffin lost the good fight. Mm-hmm. He was gull crazy. Well, that was no gull. That was Richard's wife. Anyway, the Inner Sanctum Ghost Society is mad at Dr. Griffin because he's interfering with a drive for new members. Say, by the way, if um, you should hear the wild cry of birds in your next dream, don't be alarmed. It's just that spring is on its way. Be sure to read this month's Inner Sanctum mystery novel, The Smell of Money, by Matthew Head, on sale at all bookshops. It's enough to make you shudder when you see what a boy or a girl can put in his or her stomach. Things you know would lay you low, yet they bounce out of bed in the morning just a rare and to go. That's youth for you. Yet thousands of people who should feel terrible tomorrow morning, considering the way they've insulted their digestive systems this weekend, may feel like a million tomorrow morning. Because tonight, they're going to act on a piece of advice from the book of medical knowledge. For medical knowledge proves that nature should produce about two pints of the vital digestive juice your liver makes each day. Otherwise, your food may not digest properly and leave you feeling dull, headachy, sluggish. Scientific facts show it takes a two-way treatment to get the vital digestive juice flowing quickly and to relieve sluggishness without disturbing digestion. Therefore, do as thousands now do. Take Carter's Little Liver Pills to get this two-way treatment you may need. First, Carter starts the vital digestive juice flowing, usually within 30 minutes. Second, Carter's gently help you to that glorious feeling that goes with regularity. Remember, many ordinary simple laxatives don't, but Carter's Little Liver Pills do give this two-way treatment. So take genuine Carter's Little Liver Pills as directed tonight. Tomorrow, see if you don't wake up feeling glad to be alive. Get Carter's at any drugstore. 25 cents. Be sure to listen next week. For lovely Judith Evelyn will be back with us again in a, a sweet little story just full of beautiful murder. Well, now it's time to close the squeaking door of the inner sanctum until next week. So, good night. Pleasant Inner Sanctum comes to you from New York. This is the Blue Network.